in this video we'll talk about neural tube defects our neural tube is a primordium of the brain and spinal cord that means our brain and spinal cord our entire central nervous system is actually derived from this embryonic structure which is known as neural tube at a morphological level brain and spinal cord is nothing but a tube with a variable diameter at its different ends so we can imagine brain and spinal column to be a tube so let's try to understand how neural tube closure and defect in this closure can lead to several brain disorders so the two most common form of neural tube defects are spina bifida that means it has a defect in the spinal cord and it happens when the posterior end of the neural tube or the caudal end of the neural tube doesn't close properly and the second type is anencephaly which is a brain defect and it happens when the anterior portion or the cranial half of the neural tube does not close properly these are the two most common neural tube defects there are many others which we would look at and review in this video let's talk about the risk factors which can lead to neural tube defects risk factors includes nutritional status especially folic acid deficiency and vitamin b12 deficiency can lead to neural tube defects exposure to environmental toxicants stressors and clinical situations like obesity and diabetes could accelerate the process of neural tube defects in pregnant women genetic predisposition is another important factor which might be a causal for neural tube defect now the biggest uh, factor about neural tube defect is its diagnosis first of all the entire neural tube closure happens within the first month of the pregnancy by this time the woman might not know that she is pregnant and in this particular time window folate is really essential and in this particular time window of one month if folate is not present in an adequate amount in the diet then it might lead to a neural tube defect that is why whenever a woman is thinking of conceiving at that very moment they should start taking a uh, folic acid supplements at least 400 microgram of folic acid daily till the 12 week of gestation and that is really important and this kind of dietary awareness is not present in the third world countries that is why the incidence of neural tube defects is more in the third world countries compared to the developed countries that means in africa india these kind of defects are more common than in us and any other first world countries let's talk about the classification of neural tube defects so this is a, a typical neural tube and this is the cranial end that means this particular portion would eventually form the brain and the other end is the caudal end this is the end point of the spinal cord now if the cranial end fail to fuse and close then there are defects like anencephaly where the baby is born without the part of its entire brain or skull this is a severe form of defect and the baby does not survive eventually there is also anencephaly that means a extreme retroflexion of the head the head is bent backwards this is also a kind of defect here the baby is born might survive for few years but eventually the su survival chance is really low then there is encephalocele encephalocele is a sac like protrusion projecting out of the brain of the newborn and this is kind of like a membranous cover sometime some in some extreme cases the cover might be absent as well so these are the defects which happens when the cranial end fail to fuse now what happens when the caudal end closure doesn't happen so before that let me tell you there is an extreme form of neural tube uh, closure defect which is very hard to pronounce but in craniosynthesis the absence of brain and cranial vault is visible 
so the entire brain and the spinal column is kind of missing and if the caudal end doesn't fuse properly there could be spina bifida and there is open spina bifida or there could be closed spina bifida so in this kind of disease a section of the spinal cord and the spinal nerve get exposed through a opening in the back and it kind of bulge outside now let us try to understand the mechanism of this disease and try to understand the neural tube closure in bit more details so in order to understand neural tube closure we have to imagine a sheet like this and we want to make a tube out of this sheet so we have to fold this and ultimately we can fold it into a tube right exactly same thing is happening while our nervous system is developing in the mother's womb so this is how the initial embryo look like here the yellow portion is the neuroectoderm that would eventually form the brain and the entire nervous system this particular structure eventually folds and there is one cranial end forms and another caudal end is formed in this particular structure so asymmetry is evoked the cranial end would ultimately become the head and the caudal end would be the end portion of the spinal cord now this particular neural tube has to fold this this has to curl and fold to complete this tube like formation by day 21 this folding process is peaking and the particular folding is happening in the midline then at day 24 the middle portion of this neural tube is already folded so the middle portion is fused together the cranial and the caudal ends are not fused yet so the cranial part there is cranial neuropore and the in the caudal part there is caudal neuropore this has to be closed in subsequent days by day 26 to 28 both these openings has to be closed entirely so just to recap what we have learned so far this is the top view of the embryo where we can see the neuroectoderm and how the neuroectoderm is actually uh dipping inside and forming a neural tube and the neural tube closure is done by the day 28 of uh, the gestation life so at day 28 everything should be fused if it doesn't fuse and especially in if the cranial end doesn't fuse it might lead to anencephaly if the caudal end doesn't fuse it might lead to spina bifida as we have mentioned earlier Let's look at the spina bifida in bit more details. So let's talk about the subtypes of spina bifida. So this is how a normal spinal column and the end of the spinal column look like. There would be vertebral body and this is the spinal cord visualized in gray and the meninges is actually in a uh, pink and here we can see the spinal processes. So there are different types of spina bifida which has different severity. the less severe form is spina bifida occulta so this is the mildest and the most common form generally this form uh, leads to one or more vertebra missing in the spinal column or they are malformed most of the cases the spinal processes are malformed anyway occulta means hidden that means this kind of defects does not express its uh, itself that means it's not really uh, diagnosed during screening procedures and also it doesn't show a lot of like consequences in the later postnatal life and very rarely it cause any kind of disabilities so it's the most mildest form of spina bifida next form is meningocele in meningocele the spinal fluid pokes through the spine and it pokes out of the back of the baby and forms a bulge notice that the spinal column or the spinal nerves are intact and they are not protruded and the nerves may or may not be covered by a layer of skin now in this cases there might be minor symptoms and that symptom can be treatable the most extreme situation is known as myelomeningocele in this case what happens is 
um, the entire portion of the spinal cord and the nerves and also uh, the meninges totally protrudes out of the back. Majority of the cases it is covered by the skin and some extreme cases the skin might not be present. So it leads to severe situation. Often it increases the chance of infections by bacteria. So it can cause meningitis and many other infection. Because the nerves are exposed, it could be pretty detrimental. And especially uh, babies with uh, myelomeningocele develops many problems, including the renal problems. Let's talk about the diagnosis of uh, these kind of neural tube defects. The major way of diagnosing neural tube defect is basically doing a ultrasound. If there is a huge defect or a major defect like myelomeningocele or meningocele, then it can be detected easily with uh, high resolution ultrasound. Other than that, there could be uh, biomarkers which can be detected in mother's blood or mother's serum such as alpha fetoprotein which should not be leaked out in the mother's blood but a high level of alpha fetoprotein could be an indicative of some kind of birth defect most of the cases it is due to neural tube closure defects also the amniotic fluid can be analyzed for the level of alpha fetoprotein as well as the level of acetylcholinesterase all of these things should be in a very low level in the amniotic fluid. In case of neural tube defects, everything leaks into the amniotic fluid and their level goes up. Now let's talk about the genetic disposition that leads to this kind of neural tube, fold, uh, neural tube closure defects. It turns out studying these kind of neural tube defect is really difficult because at that point of gestation, it's impossible to study a human subject. So whatever we know from a genetic point of view comes from our study in mouse and other clinical models. It turns out that there are specific signaling pathway whose alteration can lead to this kind of neural tube defect. And one significant pathway is Wnt PCP or planar cell polarity pathway. Defect in Wnt PCP pathway molecules can ultimately lead to neural tube closure defects. Let's talk about the treatment options. There could be prenatal surgery, but it has a very high risk. There could be postnatal surgery, that means the surgery happens after the baby is born. In this case, surgically, the uh, uh, portion of the back is closed and, uh, and the defective neural tube is actually taken inside. But uh, I mean, it would reduce the risk of meningitis and many other bacterial infection but it cannot heal the um, defect. So there is no absolute treatment for these kind of defects. But there are supportive treatments that can make the situation better, can increase the life expectancy. In summary, we have learned about the types of neural tube defects. We looked at the risk factors that might lead to neural tube defects. We looked at the diagnosis of neural tube defect and lastly we explored the treatment options of neural tube defect. I hope this video was informative enough. If you like this video give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notification. You can support my channel by clicking on this uh, payment button. By clicking on this you have payment option. You can support my channel by contributing a very small amount and that means a lot to me. You can get a lot of notes, flashcards in my Facebook page and also in my Instagram page like these ones. So do check that out. Links are in the description. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can take my courses in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. Using a code AP10, you can get a 10% discount. If you wish to connect, feel free to connect via